Oh, that's a big one. I'll have to excavate that. How are you doing now, Martin from Grounds for Life? So we had our first hard frost last night. It definitely went down to minus one or two and for a sustained amount of time. Uh, so the ground is fairly frozen solid now. Tonight it's going to get even a little bit colder. So this is the afternoon now. So anywhere the sun hit, the ice is already gone. It's already melted. And anywhere it was shaded, it is still all frozen. Shows the ice there. Jeez, that's a fair amount of ice. Shows the thickness of it there. That's one night of frozen temperatures. Would you like an ice cube, Levi? <laughs> he doesn't know what to do with that. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're basically here to dig up a few yakons and save them from tonight's frost. I think uh, it's better to take those up now. I have already taken in some of them last week, but um, the majority of them are out here in one place. So I covered them with plastic for the last few days. That was actually little Jacob's idea back there. Take a look at this. I was wondering how do I cover them? I don't have any fleece. So I just used a bit of builder's plastic and that actually seems to have kept the frost off it very well. Yeah, there's no frost underneath here. Slightly frozen in places, but it definitely helped insulate the tubers, but you can see the stalks have now gone completely. They're gone brown now, so I better save these crowns and uh, dig them up and we'll put them at home into our insulated cube for storage. Looking pretty okay. But a lot of the stalks that were touching off the plastic definitely got frost burned. But not looking too bad here. It looks like the ground itself hasn't frozen below the plastic. So that's not bad. What do you think? Hmm? I can't get you to eat some yakons, can I? No, but he likes tiger nuts. You like tiger nuts? You like eggs too, don't you? All right, let's get to work and dig up some of these fellas. You want a bit of ice? Take it, take it. <laughs> ice is new to these dogs. Well, the first thing I do is actually cut off the stalks and get rid of them. You can use a secretaire's or a number of other tools. Even a bill hook or a machete is fine. Or a knife, a bushcraft knife for example, is ideal for cutting back the uh, stalks of the yakon. Now, you take away all the stalks. Let me try and see if I can pull that up now. A fair old stool of tubers. A lot of them can break off though. That's okay. We can, uh, we're gonna separate them anyway to store them, but you could store them whole as well. Now that type of thing here, you'd want to eat that first. Oh look, oh thank you Nina. Thank you for helping. You're okay. Well, that's a good dog. Aren't you a good dog? You like digging, don't you? You like digging. Would you like to eat a yakon? Hmm? No, you don't eat that. We know you don't eat that. <laughs> all right. So what I'll do here with this now is I'm going to get rid of all the soil off it and then try to dry it and then we'll store it frost free. You could wash them as well with water, with a hose and then dry them and then store them after. So that's the ideal way to store them. And probably best to store them whole as a whole stool rather than uh, cutting into little pieces. Should do that a little bit later, which is why we now only do uh, full size pieces, like uh, larger pieces with several eyes on them anyway. Have a look at this one now. Always keep a bit of the stalks. Let me just get the secretaries here. We'll try and keep on a bit of the, a bit of the stalks in order to be able to pull it up a lot handier. It's kind of like a handle. A 
Ideally you want to try not to bend it. You want to try and pull it up straight because then less of the tubers underneath break off. Well, you can see here, that's, that's a nice harvest. Probably a kilo of tubers here and maybe about 10 to 20 uh, eyes for growing it again, growing new plants next year. Okay, we'll continue on. Let me see, I'll try this one here. I haven't decided what to call it yet. Look at that. Not bad. That's nice. And these tubers actually store for a very long time as well. If you keep them dry and rodent free and frost free, you can store them for actually up to 12 months. And you have a 50% chance of them, or a 50% chance that they don't go off, so that means you'll get to keep half of them until 12 months from now. So they last a long time. It's kind of what happens sometimes, the top breaks off them. The wind actually tore down most of these yakons, unfortunately so. Like you've probably seen in my last video with the wind damage. Just to roll off the builder's plastic here. So um, yeah, we'll just take the stalks off that too. Let's see what have we got here. Oh, that's a big one. I'll have to excavate that. Try and take the weight off the sides before I can pull it up. So these tubers do spread quite a bit. Ah, the dogs will love digging. Sometimes they help me dig up tubers too. <laughs> I don't like them going near them though, because in case they might damage them. Not these ones anyway, I wouldn't let them dig up these, but other ones like Chinese artichokes, for example, are fine. Let's see, can I dig that up or pull it up? It does take a bit of effort to pull these up. Especially even in no dig garden, I can't imagine it in a regular garden. But usually they only grow down to the um, soil underneath. They only grow into the compost. But you can see that is some some harvest right there. Look at that. That's nice. That's two kilos of tubers and a nice growing tip on top. They all look good anyway. They don't seem to have any frost damage at all yet. I was worried about tonight because I think it's going to get so cold for such a long period of time. Like minus two or three probably. So that um, possibly the plastic wouldn't do the job anymore. I mean it can take minus one anyway. But the plastic won't insulate the tubers for that long. Not for two days in a row anyway. You can see there's a lot of worms here too. We do get a lot of worms, especially underneath these kind of uh, yakon plants. These tubers, stool, stools. Same as uh, rhubarb as well. That's another one. There you go. And even if we leave some of these bits behind, or even entire tubers, sometimes I leave entire tubers, especially the ones that have broken out in half. I leave them in the soil, I dig them up, or sorry, I cover them over with soil, or with compost, and then the worms can eat them. What have you got there? It's just frozen into the ice. Cool. <laughs> looks like a shovel. That's cool. The Adventures of Jacob in the frozen landscapes. Give us a thumbs up. Now oh, that's them all dug up. I think that was about 30 plants in this area and they did take up the entire area along with some rhubarb plants and marshmallows and some comfrey. But look at that. 
that's the size of pile we ended up with. Here's my secretaires for reference. Of course, that one is an old one. I didn't want to bother changing gloves all the time. I didn't really have time to film every single tuber being dug up as well. But look at that. That's a really good harvest. There's like, well, probably about one and a half to two kilos per plant. Maybe one and a half kilos on average. If you're still here, thank you for watching the video. I highly appreciate it. And we will see you the next time. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below on whatever platform you might be watching this on. It could be on YouTube, Odyssey and Rumble. Although on Rumble, we still haven't synced all of our videos yet, but we will get there. If you're interested in buying any tubers, tubers vegetables like perennials or cuttings or plants, take a look at our website. We also have a no dig course as well. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. What do you think? You good boy. That's a good boy.